is something that is not part of who, is not part of us. And it's given to us from the Lord. It's not of ourselves. The good news, Christians, is that our entire life in Christ is rooted in the Lord Jesus and His work. That is the good news of the gospel. This inexpressible glory that is filled with joy is not something that we achieve. It is given freely by Christ. Our faith is not something that we achieve. It is given freely by Christ. Our salvation is not something that we achieve. It is given freely by Christ. Everything that we have is given freely by Christ. When we think about this word from the Lord in the, in the, the book of Isaiah, we hear, Come, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And he who has no money, come, buy and eat. Come and buy wine and milk without money and without price. So today, let's worship our God who gives and gives and gives freely and eternally. He gives you everything. He gives you inexpressible joy, faith, and salvation in the eternal market, which is free of charge, because he has already paid the price in his son and the sacrifice of his son, Jesus Christ. We pray with you. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for those that are here to worship with us, Lord. Here we pray, for, we thank you for those that are, Lord, worshiping with us from a distance or will see us at a different time. Lord, I just ask a special blessing on this place and these people, Lord. I ask that, Lord, the inexpressible joy that is so deep in our hearts, Lord, that regardless of whether we feel it or not, Lord, that we will, we will continue to strive for that, Lord, that we will know that, that this joy that you've given us, Lord, is rooted in Jesus Christ and not ourselves, that everything that you've given us freely is rooted in Jesus Christ, Lord. Help us to see that. Help us to know that and walk in that truth today. We just ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand and worship together. <clears throat>
our time of prayer and praise now. Um, anybody have any praises to share or any prayer requests to share this morning? Debbie? Inexpressible joy, right? Yes, I did. Yeah, remember, I just was uh, not going to say anything. <laughs> no, and not for you. No! <laughs> yes, yeah, so today's Sarah's 17th wedding anniversary, also. So, uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. May 17th is a popular day, I guess. Uh, any other prayer and praise for us? Margaret. It's great that she's going to get surgery today. And that's another thing. If anybody in here is on Facebook um, and you're not part of the Leatherwood uh, Church Prayer Group. Let Pastor Doug or myself know. Um, I, I tried to send out invites to everybody I could think of, um, but sometimes um, my memory is not as good as it used to be. Um, so if there's anybody that's not part of it or doesn't know about it, uh, let me know and then or let Pastor Doug know, and we'll send an invite out to you. And that's a, it's a place where where we can just you know throughout the week uh, stay connected with prayer requests and praise and praises also. So if anybody would like to be part of that, just let one of us know. Yes. More. Um, uh, Tracy just commented on the stream and she asked if we could pray for uh, her Aunt Louise Craig. Uh, she was sent to Butler Hospital for something went wrong with her heart. Take this all to the Lord in prayer. Father, we just thank you for this day. Lord, we have many requests this morning, Lord, and we also have many praises. Lord, we thank you for, we just thank you for everything that you do for us, Lord, that, that you've given us our, our life and breath and everything, Lord. Help us to remember that, Lord, and help us to, help us to know that, that whether it, whether it seems like good times or bad, Lord, that your love is constant, that your love does not fade or grow, Lord, with, with our circumstances, but Lord, your love is, a, is, is, is eternal, Lord, that your love continually pours out to us. Help us to know that, Lord, and, and we just ask for all these requests, Lord. Uh, we ask that, that you be with Peanuts, Lord, as he continues to make this transition from his surgery, and that, Lord, you just be with the family and strengthen them to, 
to help and to make decisions that are necessary, Lord. And, uh, and we ask for Tracy, Lord, we lift her up as she has her surgery this week, Lord, um, that, you would, that you would give the doctors, Lord, uh, give them wisdom to be able to, to help bring healing to her back, Lord, and that, uh, and that she will be able to return to health and return to normal, Lord. And, uh, and we just ask for, uh, we thank you for anniversaries and, and for hunting expeditions, Lord. We thank you for, for birthdays and for celebrations of so many different kinds, Lord. And, and that leads us to continue to pray for the seniors of this year, Lord, that uh, everything seems so so strange to them. They were preparing for uh, a time of celebration for a, a major accomplishment in life, Lord, and everything's been kind of put on hold or taken away, and Lord, it's... It's a confusing time for many young young adults, Lord, and we just ask that, that they would draw near to you and you would draw near to them in this time. Uh, be with Cookie Bish, Lord, just uh, continue to strengthen her and to help her, Lord, is, and, and also Pastor Doug and his entire family, Lord, as they still uh, Lord, with, with losing Cindy, Lord, and the, the pain there, and just help us as a church family to be aware and to be to be always willing to to walk alongside them and to help through that time, that transition, Lord. And, and we just ask that you bless this time together, Lord. You bless Pastor Doug's message this morning, Lord, and that you just um, keep lifting us up each day, Lord. Help us to walk in your strength and not our own. We just ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we've come to our time of offering, and uh, so it's a little different now. We do have the box up at the front uh, as we... Uh, uh, sing and play this song. Uh, you're welcome to come and bring it up, or if you want to bring it up after the service, that would be fine too. Um, but they've asked us not to pass the offering plate, so uh, uh, you can bring your offerings any time during this this time. <laughs>
So the children are dismissed to Children's Church at this time. I heard a yeah from the front row. You know, we're, we're getting close to summertime, and, and uh, in the summertime, I don't know if you uh, have noticed, but there's not a lot of quality television on in the summertime usually. And actually, they said it may continue into the fall that way because no one can get together to make all of the shows. So your shows may be delayed. Sorry to, to be such a downer, but your, your favorite shows you like to tune into in the fall may be delayed. And so in the summertime, there is one show that we do look forward to watching, and it's America's Got Talent. And I, I hope it's coming on this summer because the kids have been asking for it about two weeks since the last episode aired or the last one, but the, they really enjoy watching it and, and we enjoy watching it together with them and, and uh, we like the singing acts. It always has some really good singing acts and we like the, the death-defying acts where ooh, they make you, you know, just pucker when you watch them and, and, and we like the very bizarre acts where like, where did you find those people? And how can I get them to come to the church and do what they do? Uh, but uh, it, it's always interesting. And, but my favorites uh, over the years uh, is, has been the good magic acts. I, I just, there's something about that that fascinates me. Because normally I can figure most things out. But when a magician does something that, that in front of me and I go, wow. And I can't immediately figure that out in my head. I'm like, that was unbelievable. There's something about those. And so one of my favorite acts on a couple of years ago was called Declare Voyance. And we have a little video clip to show you what the, that was about. Thank you so much for having us back on America's Got Talent. Tonight we want to introduce you to America's U.S. Clairvoyance. Ladies and gentlemen, Melby. And Howie Mandel. <laughs> Tonight... We want to see if, with our help, the two of you can establish your own psychic connection. And you look happy about it, Howie. Yes. <laughs> uh, therefore, I'm going to blindfold you. Maybe oh. you remove the glasses. Okay. Perfect. All right. Just have a look if that fits. I hope it's not too loose, not too tight. Can you see through it? I cannot. Perfect. Howie, in a second, I'm going to touch you with my cleanest finger. What? Where? And as soon as you feel a touch, just signal us by raising your left arm into the air, and after a second you lower it down again, for example when you feel this, or when you feel that, or anywhere else. Melby, same for you. As soon as you feel a touch, for example, on your shoulder, I want you to raise your left hand and lower it down after a second. Okay? All good? Perfect. How 
how we I will remove the blindfold and just a couple of questions. You felt touches on your hand? Yes, I did. On your shoulder? Yes. And on your head? Yes, I did. I have to tell you something. No one touched you at all. I just touched Billy with the feather on my finger. And I think the whole audience can confirm that, right? <laughs> you are doing amazing. Wow. <laughs> How it? Stand up. Come with me. Let's go to the next step. You will stay right there. Okay. Because now we want to try if it's possible for you to reach over, to go inside now B's head and to listen to her thoughts. Oh my God, that's scary. Oh, she doesn't look happy about that. something at uh, different words. I think it's about a hundred different words. They're all different words and you can have a very close look. Those are all different words. Have a quick peek. Yes. As soon as you're done, we put the cards inside this box. All different. All different. Perfect. Yeah. Put the cards inside the box. Now shake it up and hold on to it. How Perfect. Yes. To make this work, you have to focus. You have to concentrate. And in a second, you will close your eyes and you will put your fingers in your ears so you're not getting any outside influences, okay? Okay. Relax, take a deep breath, close your eyes and put the fingers in your ears. Melby, I want you to open the box now. Open it on the sides. Now reach inside. Choose one card only and pull this card out of the bag, of the box. Read it to yourself. Don't show it to anyone yet. Now, I want you to relax your mind, Melby. And feel yourself reaching out to Howie. Oh, really? <laughs> Howie, what? J just yes or no? Did you sense the word? I, I did. Really? If, if your word, if it's just a little bit similar to her word, it would be amazing. For the first time, tell us the word you're thinking of. Sunshine. Sunshine. Melby, maybe let us know what the word you were thinking of. Sunshine. It's knows how they did that, I don't want to know. I want to still try to figure it out somehow, but would you admit that that's pretty amazing, isn't it? That, that something has, is happening there and I can't quite figure it out. I know it's probably a trick. Probably. I know it's probably not actual magic that's going off. I don't know that for sure, though. And, and it almost seems like, and they're, they're playing it up to the fact that they're tapping into some kind of supernatural force that's allowing them to have this connection on a mental level. And, and I may never know, and that's okay. But I am impressed. It's an impressive thing whenever you can get a message that someone else is trying to send without talking to them. And, and I bring all of this up because of the topic that we are, have landed on for today. For many Christians, church people, for other people, the topic of prophecy has simply been viewed as like a magic trick or as something mysterious or, or something that's weird or, or beyond the normal. And, and it can be uncomfortable, but according to Paul, as we're going on in the book of 1 Corinthians, it's something that the church should not avoid. In fact, the gift of prophecy, it is a gift from God to the church. That's what prophecy is. The gift of prophecy is something that we absolutely need in the church today. And it's, there is nothing to do with prophecy about magic or tricks. As we continue our study here in the book of 1 Corinthians, Paul gets to the topic of prophecy in chapter 14, and he spends a good bit of time on it. So we're going to take a look at 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 1 through 26. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 1 through 26. And it says this. After Paul has finished up the, the, the famous love chapter where he's, he's talked about love for 13 verses, he begins with these words. He says, follow the way of love and eagerly desire gifts of the Spirit, especially prophecy. That's interesting. Could have been pastoring. It could have been evangelist. It could have been, you know, interior decorating that he put there. It could have been this or that. But Paul says, eagerly desire the gifts of the Spirit, especially 
prophecy. It says, For anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to people but to God. Indeed, there we go, no one understands them. They utter mysteries by the Spirit, but the one who prophesies speaks to people for their strengthening, encouraging, and comfort. Anyone who speaks in a tongue edifies themselves, but the one who prophesies edifies the church. I would like that every one of you speak in tongues, but I would rather have you prophesy. The one who prophesies is greater than the one who speaks in tongues, unless someone interprets, so that the church may be edified. Now, brothers and sisters, if I come to you and speak in tongues, what good will I be to you unless I bring you some revelation or knowledge or prophecy or a word of instruction? Even in the case of lifeless things that make sounds, such as a pipe or harp, how will anyone know what tune is being played unless there is a distinction in the notes? Again, if the trumpet does not sound a clear call, who will get ready for battle? So it is with you. Unless you speak intelligible words with your tongue, how will anyone know what you are saying? You will just be speaking into the air. Undoubtedly, there are all sorts of languages in the world, yet none of them is without meaning. If then I do not grasp the meaning of what someone is saying, I am a foreigner to the speaker, and the speaker is a foreigner to me. So it is with you. Since you are eager for the gifts of the Spirit, try to excel in those that build up the church. For this reason, the one who speaks in a tongue should pray that they may interpret what they say. For if I pray in the tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. So what shall I do? I will pray with my spirit, but I will also pray with my understanding. I will sing with my spirit, but I also will sing with my understanding. Otherwise, when you are praising God in the spirit, how can someone else who is now put in the position of an inquirer say amen to your thanksgiving since they don't know what you are saying? You are giving thanks well enough, but no one else is edified. I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all of you. But in the church, I would rather speak five intelligible words to instruct others than 10,000 words in a tongue. Brothers and sisters, stop thinking like children. In regard to evil, be infants, but in your thinking, be adults. In the law it is written, with other tongues and through the lips of foreigners, I will speak to this people, but even then they will not listen to me, says the Lord. Tongues, then, are a sign, not for believers, but unbelievers. Prophecy, however, is not for unbelievers, but believers. So if the whole church comes together, and everyone speaks in tongues and inquires of unbelievers come in, will they not say that you are out of your mind? But if an unbeliever or an inquirer comes in while everyone is prophesying, they are convicted of sin and brought under judgment by all. As the secrets of their hearts are laid bare, so they will fall down and worship God, exclaiming, God is really among you. What then shall we say, brothers and sisters, when you come together, each of you has a hymn or a word of instruction, a revelation, a tongue or an interpretation. Everything must be done so that the church may be built up. So are you sensing a theme throughout this whole thing? When we ask God for a gift and when, when God gives gifts, it's not just for your own benefit. It's to build up the church. And specifically this morning, I want to take a look at the gifting of prophecy. And, and it's rather important according to Paul. And so we need to have a clear understanding of this gift. And so this morning we're going to take a look at the root of this word in both the Greek and the Hebrew. We're going to, do, to, uh, to see what Paul tells us that this gift looks like in the church. And we're going to see how we can incorporate more of it in our church and, in the, in, and among our people today. So let's, before we go any further, let's ask the Lord to bless our time. Father God, I ask that you still us. In your presence. Lord, still our hearts and our minds, our emotions. May we focus our eyes and our hearts directly on you and on your word today. And Lord, may nothing that is said today depart from your word and your truth. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. So what is the gift of prophecy? 
We get, if I went around and asked probably all of you this morning, if we had that kind of time, I'd probably get a little bit of different answer from every person that's in here based on the kind of church you grew up in, if you grew up in church at all, what, what you think that it is and what you've come to know of it. But, but most of us tend to view it as it's, it's, it's something that is far above us or beyond us, and it's about knowing what's coming in the future. Do you have, do you have an agreement with that? It, it's, it's something that sees ahead and lets you know what's going on in the future. And let's take a look at the, the, the root word in the Greek. The word used as, as prophecy or, or prophet is the word prophetuo. We're really, really, really creative in the English uh, for that. But it means this, it, said, it means to foretell or to tell growth. It means to set forth matter of the divine teaching by special faculty. That's the, like the adult version of the definition. Let me break it down because I needed to. Basically, it means to reveal the mind of God in a particular situation. So it's about taking a truth of God or, or, or something, a message that God has for us, and it's making us understand God's, God's a point of view in that situation. It's understanding. It can be about predicting the future, and it can be about revealing what is coming uh, uh, from the Lord, but it can also be anything that teaches that refutes, that reproves, that admonishes others, and that brings comfort to others. It doesn't necessarily have to be something that's far off in the future. It can be for Aaron for today. If I have a word from the Lord, it's a prophecy I can give her that might be for her today. Or it's a word that can bring about clarity for something that you went through in the past. It's about revealing the mind of God in a particular situation. In the Old Testament, the word is nava, and it means this. It means to speak or sing by inspiration and in prediction or in simple discourse, meaning you have a song in your heart. How many of you go around singing, singing a song and, and you, you have no idea where it came from? You don't know the word, you just make them up on the spot? Is that anybody else or just me? But, but you're in the shower, you're in the car, and, and this song comes to you, and you're just, you have a, the, the melodies there, the words seem to be there. Well, the prophets were those that, that had songs given to them by the Lord to help the other people to learn. And so that, that's what, what being a prophet or speaking prophecy was. Or just simply by giving a message. It, it's known as, to cause an ecstatic state in the Old Testament. Because you are under the influence of the divine spirit of God. It sets you out. It sets you apart from everybody else because you have something that they don't have. After all, was the Holy Spirit available to all, in, all believers in the Old Testament? Not yet. That wasn't until the New Testament. That wasn't until Pentecost. And so in the Old Testament, if someone had the Holy Spirit of God in them, they were different. They were set apart. They, and when they had a message, you wanted to listen to them. Quite literally, being a prophet meant that you were a spokesman or a speaker for God himself. So let's bring this information together. First of all, prophecy does not exist without the inspiration of God through his Holy Spirit. Amen. A lot of people tell you words that come from the Lord, that come from their thoughts, okay? But if it's prophecy, it will come from the mind of God, and God will place it into the mind of someone with this gift. This gift is only available to believers. If someone is not a believer, they cannot give you a prophecy, period. Period. It only comes through the Holy Spirit in believers. And so God is speaking a message, sometimes about your future, sometimes about your present, sometimes about your past. And in order to get it across to you, I'm going to say, I'm going to strike that to you. In order for God to get that message across to me, sometimes, and get through the thick walls of this skull, it has to come from someone else saying it. And so prophecy is how God supplies 
this message. When we can't, he can't seem to get the message through to us and through our thick minds, he sends somebody with the gift of prophecy to give us that message. This may be a simple Bible truth that someone needs to hear. Sometimes that's all prophecy is. Looking at someone and saying, Scott, Jesus loves you. And Scott going, oh, I never realized that. Sometimes it's as simple as that. Amen. Sometimes it might involve a future event that a, a person needs to be prepared for or needs to hear about. Sometimes it might be a confirmation that someone's been waiting to hear from someone else. But know this, prophecy always starts with God. And prophecy goes through someone with the gift of prophecy and it lands onto another person's mind who needed to hear the message. So we've looked at the root of these words, but I want to take a look at, uh, just briefly, at, in the passage here, what prophecy is through the lens of Paul. Because Paul goes through these 26 verses and says, okay, you know about prophecy. The people that he was writing to were probably familiar with what the, the word prophetio meant and what novel meant. But, but Paul was saying, no, prophecy also looks like this. And so Paul says, the first thing that he says, that prophecy always edifies people and the church. Prophecy always edifies people in the church. Has anyone ever had a bad taste in their mouth about the, the word prophecy? Uh, you can be honest. You know where most of the bad tastes have been left in the mouths of, of us oh, concerning prophecy has been due to the fact that some prophets do not stick to Paul's roles. Paul says, prophecy is to edify the church, the believers, and the people. And then prophets come along and they're all doom and gloom. You're going to die. If you don't turn from this thing, you're going to... That's really edifying, isn't it? They seek to burn everything down with their words. But Paul clearly says, the purpose of prophecy is to build people up. That's how you can tell it comes from the Lord and not from someone's mind. Is it building you up? Is it strengthening you? Is it edifying to you? Here's what it says starting in verse 1 from our scripture. Follow the way of love and this eagerly desire the gifts of the Spirit, especially prophecy. For anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to people but to God. Indeed, no one understands them. They utter mysteries by the Spirit. But the one who prophesies speaks to people for their strengthening, encouraging, and comfort. Did you get that? Speaks to people for their strengthening, encouragement, and comfort. Anyone who speaks in a tongue edifies themselves, but the one who prophesies edifies the church. If I were like every one of you to speak in tongues, but if I would rather have you prophesy, the one who prophesies is greater than the one who speaks in tongues unless someone interprets, so that the church may be edified. The first thing that we see there is if our prophecy is not rooted in love, we're doing it the wrong way. We're following the way of love. And love is a prerequisite of prophecy, according to, to Paul. And this love and prophecy must seek to build up the other person and the church. This does not mean that all of our prophecies are going to be all sunshine and lollipops. But it does mean that we're going to have the person's best interest in mind. And so we usually have to have a relationship with that person. Right, Ember? Where we can give them bad news in a loving manner. Or we can tell them as it is, as a loving parent type figure. Or we can tell them what they need to hear and they not turn off right away. Amen. Amen. So for a prophet, we should trust someone who has our best interest in mind. And we should go to them for prophecy. 
And we should seek to have a relationship with them. Edification should be the major goal of all prophecy given. And it always strengthens, encourages, and comforts the one who is receiving it if it's done in a correct fashion. So all prophecy edifies the people and the church. The next thing that I see from our scripture with prophecy is that all prophecy will bring intelligible revelation and knowledge. Intelligible revelation and knowledge. You know, have you ever watched one of those TV shows where they have a psychic on there and, and the person goes to the psychic and they sit down and, and they say, wow, I see that you've been through a really dark time sometime in your past. No. You don't say, you know, and, and they keep it very vague, but the person on the other end is like, how did you know? 15 years ago, I went through. Yes. But sometimes prophecy can get this way too. When someone is prophesying over us, they almost seem to, to go so vague that it could be true for just about anyone. But that's not the purpose of prophecy, according to Paul. When God sends a prophecy into your life, it's because he wants to bring fresh revelation. He wants to bring fresh knowledge into your life. God has a clear message for you. Do you believe that? God has a clear message for you. So why would he jumble it up into the, the person, the prophet, to come to you and say, it might be this or it might be that? No, he would take the clear message... Give it into the prophet, and the prophet will give you a clear message in return. God wants you to know exactly what the message is that he has given to you. Listen to what our scripture says, starting in verse 7. It says, Even in the case of lifeless things that make sounds, such as the pipe or harp, how will anyone know what tune is being played unless there is a distinction in the notes? Again, if the trumpet does not sound a clear call, who will get ready for battle? So it is with you. Unless you speak intelligible words with your tongue, how will anyone know what you are saying? You will just be speaking into the air. Undoubtedly, there are all sorts of languages in the world, yet none of them is without meaning. If then I do not grasp the meaning of what someone is saying, I am a foreigner to the speaker, and the speaker is a foreigner to me. So does it sound like God wants you to be confused in this whole process? Yeah. Are you still with me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. No, he does not want you to be confused. God wants the message he has for you to be received and to be understood by you. Some of it may not be immediately clear, and, and it may pertain something to your future, and you say, well, I don't understand quite what that is yet, but as soon as it happens and you start into this prophecy, you're like, Oh, that's what God was trying to tell me. God is not in the game of sending unclear messages. He wants you to know what he's talking about, and he wants you to be able to understand the message he is sending. Otherwise, why would he send the message in the first place? Again, Paul says this in verse 19, he says, But in the church... I would rather speak five intelligible words to instruct other than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. Five intelligible words. Prophecies don't have to be long. They don't have to be confusing. They need to be intelligible. They need to bring clarity. They need to bring revelation. So if the prophecy you are given does not lead to knowledge and does not lead to revelation, then you need to ignore it. According to Paul, it's probably not from God. It should be a clear revelation to you of what God wants you to do. So finally, Paul says that all prophecy can lay bare the secrets of your heart. You know, when we were in Romania last summer, we had a tremendous time of of at the, the camps that we were in, at the end of the camps, we would lay hands on the kids and we would pray prophetically over them. And, <clears throat> you know, that made me uncomfortable because I am not a gifted prophet. I am a preacher and I am a teacher 
and the other stuff is for the prophets and for the event. That's not who I am. But boy, was that a beautiful time. And one of the most powerful things I've ever been a part of. And Paul tells us that we can eagerly desire this gift. That we don't have, you know, we don't either have it or not have it. That we can eagerly desire this gift and that God can give us more when we need it. And I specifically remember there was a group of us, we were praying over this teenage girl. And it got uncomfortable in a hurry. Because God was laying bare her lifestyle and her choices before all of the people that were praying for her. It was immediately, like, her sins were just, like, out there in the open. And we were praying over her, and I thought, this girl is going to run out of here. We are never going to see her again. I can't believe that this is what is being, being spoken over her. And you know what her reaction was? She fell to her knees in repentance. And she said, that's absolutely, everything you have said is true in my life, and I need to let that go. And I was like, whew! <laughs> because that's the last thing you want is, you know, the kid from another country going over to their parents and saying, this preacher accused me of this, this, and this, and this, and it was not. Drop to her knees in repentance. Why? Because the Lord knew everything about her and loved her anyhow. Loved her in spite of that. You know, prophecy sometimes can lay bare the secrets of the heart. But sometimes we hold so tightly to those secrets that this is the only way that the Lord can break us of them. He lays them bare. And I'm not saying that he announces them to the entire church. There was only like three or four of us praying over this girl. No one else knew what was going on there. But God laid them bare in front of this girl so that she had to deal with them. Because God's choice is to benefit and edify you. And sometimes you need to see what you have done before God can reach you. Here's what Paul says, in, starting in verse 22. It says, Tongues then are a sign not for believers, but for unbelievers. Prophecy, however, is not for unbelievers, but believers. So if the whole church comes together and everyone speaks in tongues and inquires and, and or unbelievers come in, will they not say that you are out of your mind? But if an unbeliever or an inquirer comes in while everyone is prophesying, they are convicted of sin and they are brought under judgment by all, as the secrets of their hearts are laid bare. So they will fall down and worship God, exclaiming, God is really among you. God is really among you. Where does that come from? It comes as you step into people prophesying over you. You know, prophecy puts every person in the room in the presence of God. Amen. How do I know this? Because during one of these times of prophetic prayer, my son Noah was playing in the back. And as we were just praying over people, he was back there, you know, being a typical eight, nine-year-old, you know, just kind of being at the back of the church. And all of a sudden, someone came up and got me and said, your son is crying in the back of the church. And he wants to talk to you. And so I said, no, well, what's going on? And he said, I was just, just back there, you know, he said, listening to church. <laughs> and uh, all of a sudden I saw God sitting in front of me. And God told me that I wasn't living the way that I should. And I needed to give my heart to him. Yeah. Not one person talked to him about that. But because the, we were prophesying and, and, and praying over people, he was brought into the presence of God by that. Yeah. And he was found himself that the secrets of his heart were laid bare in front of God. And he gave his heart to the Lord that evening. No one could deny the presence of God in that place. See, there's no quicker way to get the entire church into the presence of God and the close proximity than through prophecy. And if there is, I haven't found it. But prophecy is intended to bring you near to God. 
And in that process, he may shine a light in some uncomfortable places, but it's for your own benefit. It's so that he can take those things away and bring you closer. Prophecy is not some magic trick. Prophecy is the greatest gift of the Holy Spirit for our benefit and for the benefit of the church as a whole. Prophecy is God sending someone into your life who has clearly heard from him, who relays God's message to you. That's simply what it is. It's meant to build us up. It's meant to bring fresh and clear revelation into your life. It's meant sometimes to lay the secrets bare before him. It's not something that will tear you down. And it's something that's always filled with intelligible words. And it's meant to bring you into a whole new level of intimacy with God. You know, we need those here in Leatherwood with this gift to be released in their gifting. You're needed. I've told you, I am not gifted in prophecy, and maybe the Lord will change that. I don't know. We need you if you have this gift, because you are, in de we desperately need you as a church. You are the builders of the church. You are the strengtheners, the edifiers. And we cannot put handcuffs on you or allow you just to sit on the sidelines. Because according to the book of Ephesians, you are part of the fivefold ministry of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have evangelists, we have preachers, we have teachers, and we have prophecy. Amen. It's right there in the Word of God. This morning I've asked just a, a, a few people to come. And to pray prophetically over people. And normally you do this by gathering around and laying hands. I don't know, care what you want to do if you want to get permission from them to do that um, with the corona thing. But uh, Scott and Emma are going to come and, and, and I'm going to have them stand over here. They're going to be praying for you. If you would like prayer, Alan and Faith are going to stand over here. Uh, I'll be up here uh, by the platform or down front here um, to pray with you. If you need a word from the Lord, come and ask, and you will receive. It may come this morning. It may come because I, I told them not to just pray for you this morning, but to continue to pray for you until they have heard from the Lord for you. But I guarantee when you receive this word, you'll receive clarity, you'll receive revelation, you'll receive edification, and even more when they tell you what the message that the Lord has for you. Would you pray with me? Father God, we enter into your presence. And Lord, we seek your Holy Spirit to give us wisdom, to give us knowledge, to unlock a word of instruction, the prophecy for anyone here who would like to receive. And so, Father God, I, I, I just pray that anyone who, would, who needs clarity, who needs build up, who needs to be closer to you, that they would come and receive a word. The, not just any word, but the word you have directly and instinctively for their lives. And Father God, I just place this time in your hands, and it's in Jesus' name. Amen. So anyone who would like prayer this morning, you can come. We're going to close in a couple of songs. Um, but just stay in, in, in prayer at your seat. You can sing along, but to anyone who would like to come and receive a word, you may do so this morning.
just close with this. If you have uncertainty in your life, what you need is prophecy. You don't need to go to speak to a friend. You don't need to go, you know, to, 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 talk, to search the internet for the answer. If you have uncertainty, what you need is prophecy. What you need is God guiding your steps. If you have, don't know the answer for, okay, this is the step I'm going to take next. What you need is prophecy. And what I've found is if you feel like you're just going through the motions at church, what you need is prophecy to light a fire to let you know what you're to be doing. And I have good news for you. Prophet Bob Schreckengoss will be here on June 14th, and he is ready to preach. He has not been able to, to speak for a while. Uh, he will be here, and the Lord has just gifted him in a special way for this. And so I hope that you guys can come out for that. But uh, yeah. don't settle for not having a word from the Lord. Because he always has direction. He always has something for you. You are dismissed. Go out under the word of the Lord today. Again, if anyone has any questions about the, the drawings back there, you can see a building committee member. Uh, Scott's over here. Um, you can talk to him or, uh, or uh, some of the others. I don't see anybody else that's here. I think Pat's here too. Um, but uh, you can see them. Uh, and Sue. There's Sue. All right. So uh, you are dismissed. Have a great Sunday.